Texas, and the markets are over a thousand miles away. A day's drive on the Sedalia Trail is eight, ten miles at the most. Fine and easy when the prairie grass is fresh and the river's wet. But you have to keep going when the grasses are parched, when the water has disappeared under the drought. That's when the cows become skittish, hard to manage. Nobody takes his boots off as long as it lasts. The last one to take his boots off is me, Gil Favor, trail boss. sitting up there all alone. This heat? Yeah, no horse anywhere. Huh? He's all decked out in one of them black frock coats. You talked to him? No, I didn't. Could be a decoy. Indians pull stunts like that. This I gotta see. Here. He was sitting right on that log. Wings on him? Fly away? He's got to be here somewhere. Pete, it's awful hot. Just in case that was a decoy, we better be ready. Yeah, Pete. What's the matter, mister? The Lord bless you, son. What are you doing out here in the wilderness? What are we doing? You a preacher? You can call me Brother Bent. You lost? Lost is the word, son. Preacher? I'm a servant of God, yes. Preacher or an undertaker? Which? He's a preacher, Wish. Where are you heading? Nowhere. A couple more hours in this sun, you'll get there. You all alone? I'm indeed alone, for I failed God. You men smell cattle. <laughs> Our cattle. God has answered my prayer. He hasn't left me alone on the plains of Gomorrah. They tore me from my pulpit. They rode me out of town. They whooped and they hollered till they drove poor Abner mad. I couldn't control him. Poor miserable beast must still be running. Something we can do for you, Brother Ben? Well, my soul's in perdition. But you can save the wretched body of house it. Meal. The job. You know cattle? I grew up with them. Rode many a trail up and down these parts. Then why should you trust your herd to a man who failed his flock? We can always use another hand. A good hand. Roddy? And Brother Bent your horse. You see that cow with the brown splotches on his rump? Frisking his head? Cut him out for me. It 
Well, it's peculiar him being right on our trail like that. As if he was waiting for us. We don't know much about him. We'll find out all we need to know. Hey! Awful jittery. They're all jittery. We had a little thunder last night. That one seems like a real troublemaker. That's why you wanted him cut out, Mr. Faber? Maji! You and Brother Bent, slaughter him up. We'll eat steak again for a while. All right. Let's get it done, Brother Bent. I'm on. Consider your bedroll thrown in the wagon. Pete, have the wrangler give him a horse. Wishbone will give you a gun. No, I never carry one. Suit yourself. You'll draw for who rides drag in the morning. In case you've all forgotten it, we're pushing a big herd. Let's get at it. Let's see what you can do, dude. this here contest now. That Jim Quince has got nerves like steel. Uh, the loser's Joe Scarlett. Hey, Joe, you're getting a little old, huh? <laughs> and trailing by a few drops, Brother Ben. Five days of drag, where it looked like you were just born to eat dust. Drag a point, it's all the same in the long journey. They both end up at the same place. Maybe so. Maybe so. Not like old times, isn't it? Start out with men, half of them green, half of them rusty, and you turn them into an outfit. I don't know how you do it. All good men to start with. You reading a good book for breakfast, Brother Ben? A soul needs feeding, too, son. You haven't told us much about this town that rode you out, Brother Ben. Well, not much to tell. It was an ordinary little town. Most of the inhabitants came to the meeting house on Sunday to hear me say a few words from the pulpit. It's a quiet, God-fearing, hard-working little town. Then what got into it? The devil. Do you know the devil? You talk like you've seen him, Brother Ben. He had no shape or form, but he had a name. Greed, the plague that corrupts the human heart. It spreads like the flood, nay, like the pestilence. You breathe it in, you catch it for one another. Greed, that's what drove me from that town. All right, let's butt those saddles.
Three dollars. I'll call you. My cards. Two cards. They broke count, Mr. Crowley. Bird's on the move again. How far ahead? I'd say about 12 miles. Aces and kings. <laughs> Time to move. Something got me curious. Whatever gave you the feeling to send me back like that? Tail end of the herd, no stragglers. Cattle bunch up that way, they have the feeling they're being followed. One thing, it didn't figure to be another herd this late in the season. You're right about that, too. Cowboys with no herd. They start when we start and stop when we stop. Must be two of them to our one. Well, they got one less advantage now. We know they're there. I'm well, figuring the same way. We got one more advantage. They don't know we know. Is there one among you knows what day this is? Is it Independence Day? It's the Lord's Day. Yay. The Sabbath. And though we drive the herd today, as on other days, it's fitting that we give pause, if only for a loving moment a few solemn words to set this day apart. I take from my text. I take from my text the parable of the golden calf. Exodus, chapter 32. For in the Sinai wilderness, Aaron cast the earrings and the jewelry of the children of Israel into the fire and fashioned them a golden calf. And the people fell down and worshipped the idol as God. And so it happened in the town I've already told you about. A man brought a rock to the assayer. And the assayer named its name, Gold. And the people fell down and worshipped the gold as an idol. They rushed into the hills after more gold. Good went from their hearts, and greed came in its place. They forgot about God, and drove their man of God into the wilderness. But God has given it to these eyes to behold this evil, and go forth and cry out unto you, and to you, and to you, and to you. Oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Oh, you who are the lifeline of this great and growing nation, Close your eyes to the sins of the golden calf. Let your rewards be your own accomplishments. Amen. Now, in case any of you men think that these were just preacher's words, let me show you what the greed for gold can do, not only to the soul, but to the body of a man as well. Must have looked at my saddlebag. Sure does it glitter. That's what I was thinking. And it sure does look like it. I never saw a nugget this size. It's gold. High grade, too. Almost pure gold. You know, he was telling the truth about that town he spoke about. It truly exists somewhere. Here, see for yourselves. He looks something like you. What happened to Joe 
scarlet. Traded places with it. Hey, the town they uh, rode you out of. Uh, they chase you all the way? Well, they stampeded my horse and wrecked my buggy. Well, it couldn't have been too far from where we picked you up. I didn't say how long they chased me. What'd you say the name of this town was, Brother Ben? I like that. No beating around the bush, you come right out of it. I like you, Flag. That's why I'll never tell you. I refuse to be the instrument of the poison of your soul. I used to be a prospector. I'm glad to hear the words used to be. Well, I might like to try my luck again. The bird seems to be leaning to my side. I better trim it. It's for your own good I'm not telling you, Flag. I'm real sorry you're eating dust for nothing. They're keeping out of sight, but they're down there somewhere. Gives you the creeps. Beats me why Mr. Faber didn't pick a better place to make noon camp instead of setting us out here on the slope like sitting ducks. Where he calls noon camp's his business. Anybody spot anything? No, they know how to keep out of sight. Wish Mr. Faber would see fit to give him battle. Me too. Put that thing away before you hurt yourself. Ruddy? Yeah. Got a job for you. I want you to trail boss for a spell. Trail boss? You'll be short-handed. Most of the men will stay here with me. Want the herd moved out over the pass. Sure, Mr. Faber. Are we really gonna fight? I don't know. When they see us on the move, they'll be on the move. We'll be waiting for them, and we pick the spot. They can either fight us or pass us. Choice is up to them. I'll let them come. You won't be there. A trail herd without a chuck wagon doesn't look alive. Take over, Ronnie. All right, let's butt those saddles. We've got a herd to move. What do you think? They're herd hungry. They'll show. Come. Stand away from them. Rugged. That the lot of you? Who are you? You're Gil Faber. I know who I am. I'm Clint Crowley been trailing us for the last five days. We haven't been trailing you. We've just been stalling. Lost our herd to Texas fever. Not exactly looking forward to going home with the news. Sorry about your herd. It's not only the herd. I've got a contract to deliver so many head to Dobson each year. I fail this year, the contract is forfeited. Not only me, but the whole town of Crowley is ruined. So you figured to help yourself to my herd? I was tempted to try. I'm not a crooked man, Mr. Faber. I'm willing to buy your cows. Make an offer. Four dollars a head. They're worth 40. At the end of the trail, that's a long way off. That can happen. The trail driver takes his chances. Best I can do. We'll relieve you of your ammunition and you can go on. Brother Bent? You setting us loose on the plains unarmed? Be grateful to him for removing temptation. Always carry a man of God with you. Your gun belt. Yours, sir. <laughs> Be 
can't go on like this much longer. Well, cheer up, son. There's good grazed land six miles ahead. Six miles? Beyond that ridge. And water a day's drive past that. I guess you know Chisholm and Goodnight better. My first drive on the Sedalia. Appreciate any information. We had a wet winter and a wetter spring. Lazy River's got plenty of water. It's a ways off the trail. Some, but if they had water, your cows would make up for the day or two they'd lose. Counting on getting supplies in the town of Mudlock. Well, there's Juniper on the Lazy River. Not much of a town as towns go, but you can get most anything you want there. Hey, Wishbone, come on in. Stay free. Brother Ben, you're mighty handy to have around. If you should ever decide to trade in the pulpit for the trail, I'll have a place for you. Well, I'll remember that, son. We gotta find a way to make him talk. No problem. That's what he does easiest and best. The trick is to make him say anything. friend. It hurt me more than it hurt you. That's the evil power of gold. Trouble when you have it. Trouble when you want to get rid of it. That gold sure to teach you a powerful lesson. You know the difference between God's gold and the devil's gold? Well, I'll tell you. God's gold must be earned with sweat and toil. But the devil's gold can be taken as easily as Adam plucked the apple from the tree of knowledge. There was this gold lying about in chunks and nuggets, about the size of a man's fist, right up in the hills behind my town. Is it still lying around up there? The outcroppings are scraped up, but there are undoubtedly rich loads beneath. But don't waste your breath asking me about it. I'm your friend. I'm not going to lead you to the grazing fields of the golden calf. Yes, sir. I'm ready, sir. Well, come up here close and ease it down gentle-like. Well, oh, let it go, Mr. Wishbone. I can handle it. That'll teach you to keep away from whiskey. Likes quite a wallop, don't it? Where's our poker barrel, Wishbone? No, I'm losing money every minute I'm not playing. You and your bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm the best poker hand on the trail. My winnings prove it. That's because you've been taking on plum amateurs. Well, they don't know their ace from the deuce. Meaning you're an expert? There are three things I'm proud of. 
my sourdough cake, my beard, and my poker playing. You're uh, protecting your reputation by never playing. I'm waiting for higher stakes. I mean to pluck you drovers when you collect your pay in Sedalia. I call that bluff now. Well, if you want to lose all your winnings, I'm willing. In real money, cash money. Nothing else but. And get the spigot in the cups, Mushy. After we get up there, you Jasper. Sorry, Mr. Roddy. Mr. Wishbone tell me when Mr. Favor gives an order, you'd drop everything. Check. Pass. Open for three. I'll call. Call. Keep this one. Discard the face cards, Wishbone. How would you like somebody peeping over your shoulder in the pulpit, whispering in your ear, quote this chapter, not that one? I'd pay heed if the man knew his scriptures. Well, this is poker playing, Brother Bent, not preaching. Three cards. Two. Take three to see him. Call. Three trades. We'll just add five to each one of those, and that's what I got. Well, I beat him without help. Want to sit in, Brother Ben? Deal me in. A preacher? Gambling? I figure the good Lord will overlook this one transgression, since it's in such a good cause. We're playing for keeps. Money? Well, that I haven't got, but, uh, will this do for security? Meanwhile, we can just use these pebbles for chips. Fifty cents a piece? A dollar. Pebbles don't care. Open for a dollar. Cards? Three cards. I'll take one. Check to the one. Three. Three. And twenty. No, he's picking up more pebbles. Here's my nugget against everything you got in front of you. Full house. Beats me. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Brother Ben, I'll give you a chance to get it back. Well, this is all I have to put up. We'll cut for high card. The nugget, all the money I got against the name of the place where this nugget came from. It'll be fate, not me. All right. Ace of hearts, you lucky prospector. The only thing that'll beat it is the ace of spades. One chance at 51. You men put up all your holdings. And if I lose, you'll all be in on it. I said put up everything. What you got in your pockets? Wishbone? You do me the honor. Well, I'll be toasted on a spit. The ace of spades. Well, so it is. I guess the fates just didn't want you to know the name of that place. The Lord. Take it away, and the Lord give it back. Brother Bant, when Quince asked you how come you were gambling, you said it was for a good cause. 
What cause? The cause have proven to you the evils and dangers of gambling. What I really did was deliver a little sermon with the aid of 52 assistants. I trust you boys all learned a lesson. And it might please you to know that your contribution will help establish a new house of worship. Come and get it. Mr. Favors breaking out the whiskey keg. Come and get it. Most of you men have ridden with me before and know my trail rules. I don't set my men loose on trail towns. We do our drinking outside the town, save the big blow off at the end of the drive. We'll hold here for a few days, rest the cattle. So you can do your drinking now, on the house. Oh. Yeah. Line up here. Come on, line up here. Oh, yeah. Look. I got my head. It's all okay. I'm riding into Juniper. Do you want to come with me? Oh, no, I don't think it would be fair, being as the other men are staying here. Right. See you later. Never, thank you. Liquor is another of man's plagues. We were just drinking a toast to... to the downfall of the devil and his ways. Well, there isn't anything I wouldn't do for that cause. <coughs> and while we're at it, let's, uh, let's drink to something more positive. To the return of virtue and righteousness to the town of... Drunk or sober, the name of that town will never pass these lips. Thank you, brother. following me? Juniper's off us a daily trail, Favor. Besides, we had to buy ourselves some ammunition. You sell them the ammunition? Add the cost to my bill. That settle our account? Maybe his, but not mine. What's on your mind? Two years ago was on my mind. You broke the rules. You deserve to be fired. <laughs> I mighty Mr. Favor and his fancy rules. Insults you. Won't give you the satisfaction of a fair fight. Not the high and mighty Mr. Favor. Against his principles to fight with hired hands. You're not my hired hand anymore. Ah. Shooting him wouldn't give me near enough satisfaction. That's what you want. The supplies I want. Thank you. 
Paper, we're in bad trouble. The whole outfit's quit. They go into town. Well, they quit for good. They packed up their bedrolls and took off. Without wages? Yeah, they, they sort of went crazy. They got Brother Ben drunk, and he told them about some town that was larded with gold. And off they rode. All of them? Well, except Pete and Wishbone. They're doing their best to guard the herd. Why didn't you ride in and tell me? Well, I thought I'd better stay with the herd. Where are we gonna get a new crew, boss? No chance of getting one in Juniper. What do you think? We're going back to town. You never know what card fate will turn up next. Here I am with plenty of men and no cows. There you are with plenty of cows. I'll hire you men. Double the regular wages. We don't work for Mr. Favor. Won't solve my problem. I gotta have beef on the hoof or I lose my contract. Your office still stand? My office still stands. Four dollars a head. Juniper's been taking some of my money. Two dollars a head. That's less than they were worth when they were calved. Only four men to tend them. Your cows will scatter all over Texas. My men can pick them up for nothing. That's the way vultures do business. <laughs> You're between the devil and the deep blue. Be glad I'm a businessman with no time to waste. I'd like to start driving those cows tonight. <laughs> Throw up the papers. First time I lost a herd. Feel kind of naked without my chuck wagon. Two dollars a head. Pay back the lost if it takes the rest of my life. We going straight back, Mr. Favor? Plenty of time in the morning. Now I know what Crowley meant, not being in a hurry to go home with bad news. Just some wildcat sign. All I know is whoever the thieves were, they sure knew how to hide their tracks. I still say they must have moved in shallow water. What's the difference? You lose your hands, you lose your herd, and you lose your money. How do you explain it to the people who trusted you? It wasn't your fault, Mr. Favor. They could have jumped me just as easy, Wishbone. You know, I keep thinking of this Crescent City. In what Crescent City? That's the place Brother Bent told the boys about when they got him drunk. Rich load, outcroppings, gold to be picked off the trees. It isn't much out of the way. What have we got to lose? Well, if it's not much out of the way, we might as well go now. Nobody feels like sleeping. 
inside anywhere. And doesn't look like there's been any for some time. I know he said Crescent City. Well, it's still kind of early in the morning yet. It's not that early. Brother Bent ever spoke. No gold in those hills, huh? No gold, no hills. Nothing but abandoned diggings in an abandoned town. That devil preacher played a dirty trick on us. Will you take us back, Mr. Faber? We'll take a cut in pay for the time we lost you. Mr. Faber had to sell the herd, dude. All that gold talk, we just didn't think. What you done with my cook's louse? Was she? Isn't he with you? What do you mean? He was riding with us, but all of a sudden he changed his mind and rode back to rejoin you. When? So the afternoon we quit on you. You thinking what I'm thinking? Mushy's in trouble. I have the feeling Brother Ben could tell us what happened to Mushy. I have the feeling Brother Ben could tell us a lot of things. Yeah, but where are you going to find Brother Ben? I'm going back to the herd. Our herd. <laughs> Feel good just looking at him. That's three dollars. Well, son, I'll just have to call you. Stay. I'm out. Little nine high straight. I guess I better turn in before I lose all my wages for the whole drive. Ah, deal me out. I gotta check the night riders. My lucky night. I found him. I changed my mind, Mr. Faber. I came back. They was robbing you when I rode up. I tried to yell. Shut up. You took your money back, Crowley. That cancels our deal. Just like that? I'm taking my herd back.
You better take your men and go, Faber, while they're going. Hold it, Faber! You ain't going anywhere. I've been waiting a long time for this. Just a minute, Rocket. I went along with tricking the herd for Mr. Faber. I helped you do it. I went along with taking the money back from him. But I draw the line at murder. <laughs> What's the matter with you, Dave Bent? You've been taking him with your own preaching? Maybe I have. Get out of the way, Davy boy. I'm gonna shoot, Dave, whether you get out of the way or not. I'll shoot right through you. Rock it! Mr. Favor, I owe you mine. Mr. Crowley here owes you something else, too. Keep it. I'm buying back the herd. You better keep it, Crowley, and thank Providence you got nothing more in your conscience than a robbery that didn't come off. Like I said, Brother Bent. Dave Bent. And throw your bedroll in with us. We'd be glad to have you with a drive. Well, thanks, Mr. Favor, but. Seems like with all my preaching, I finally got me a convert. Myself. I just don't feel natural anymore without my Bible and my preaching hat. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but I guess what I've done sort of makes me feel as though I'd rather be with the good Lord than against him. Good luck, Brother Ben. Thanks, Mr. Fairley. hat is the first thing he puts on when he gets up, and the last thing he takes off when he beds down. In summer, the wide brim shades his eyes from the sun. In winter, he pulls the brim down, ties it over his ears to avoid frostbite. He uses the crown as a bucket, and the brim as a drinking cup. That's why a cowhand will get the best hat he can, because it's got to serve a dozen purposes its maker never dreamed of. The same thing goes for the men wearing the hats. I know, I'm Gil Faber, trail boss. I rode both ways for about five miles. What'd you find? Nothing but hills, no way around them. This uh, is the shortcut. The one you said it'd lop off three days? Well, we did save about two days until... Uh-huh. Well, those hills would be fine for mountain goats. Only trouble is... We're not herding goats. <laughs> you heard that, huh? Any towns near here? The trail map says Mesa's about two hours ride down the flat. Yeah, graze the herd. Keep looking for a way through, though. I'll ask around in Mesa. <laughs> What do I do now? Must be a livery stable in town. Yeah, and a sheriff. I'm thinking of Sam Burton. Anybody remember him? It's been about 10 years. Maybe he won't remember us. Well, maybe he won't want to, but he will. This spread ain't more than a mile down the road.
I heard you ride up. You're welcome to... Maury was afraid you mightn't remember us. I remember you, Gaff. Is your wife with you and the boy? There you are. Boy'd be about uh, 16 now, wouldn't he? That's right. Where is he? Boy's in Mesa with his mother. They're shopping. I ain't got no money, Gaff. I get along, that's just about all. Oh, we don't want any money, Sam. That's what we want. I only got one saddle horse. One's all we need. All right. Why'd you come here? Or his horse is lame. Lame horse can't keep up with a stagecoach, can it, Sam? But that's not what you wanted to know, is it? I'm sorry to hear you're not doing too well, Sam. I'm satisfied. You could do a lot better, a lot better, Sam. Twice a week, that San Antonio stagecoach comes through Mesa. Don't carry nothing but passengers. True, but what do the passengers care? Horse is ready. Sam isn't. Hey, you got my horse, now why don't you get out of here? Sam, when we rode in here and let you take a look at us, that minute, you hear they're gonna join up with us or die? I can't do you no good. Of course you can, Sam. You always thought fast when things got rough. Your house would make a nice, safe place to hole up. After we got what we're after. Oh. Uh, my kid don't know what I used to be. Now, don't get excited, Sam. Maury, he's a little emotional. He didn't really mean what he said. Did you, Maury? No. I'm very fond of you, Sam. You were an honest outlaw back in the old days. I could trust you. And somehow I... I feel that I can trust you now. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone about you. No, Sam, you won't. Don't do any good. <laughs> Who was he? Oh. My father. Well, he was already dead when I got here. There's somebody else that came from behind him. You better look after her. You're gonna shoot us too? It's a story.
story, Mr. Favor, but not a good one. What would you have me do? Improve on the truth to make a better story? You ain't believe anymore, you, Mr. Wilson. I'm holding him for trial, son. He ought to hang. That's for a jury to decide. He didn't wait for a jury before killing Paul. You better take your mother home, boy. <laughs> Going home, Ma. Yes. Home. Look, Sheriff, I'm I'm just a working trail boss. I got a herd blocked up in the hills. Two hours right north of here. Believe it. You'd be a fool to lie about anything as easy to check on as that. Of course. The only reason I came into Mesa was to see if there was another pass through the hills. That's one reason. Sam Burton could be another. Well, no. If I really killed him, would I be bringing his family into town? I don't know. Ain't paid to know. Well, you might try finding out. Jury will. When? Well, as soon as the circuit court judge gets here. How soon will that be? He's holding court up in Anaconda right now. That's the county seat. All right. How soon will he be here? Well, could be a week, maybe a month. A month? I'd lose the herd. You lose a mighty sight more than that if the jury finds you guilty. But you won't find it so bad. Look, Sheriff. Sure. You believe I'm a trail boss. Why don't you at least try believing that maybe I didn't kill Burton? Two witnesses, for one thing. For another, ten years ago, Sam Burton was an outlaw. Only his wife and me know that. Nobody else, not even his son. What's that got to do with me? You're a trail boss now. Can you prove to me what you were ten years ago and where? Sure, given time. You're gonna have the time. Look. Could you at least notify my men? You say it's uh, two hours ride north? Sure. I'll send a man in the morning. Rowdy? What's the matter? You got a face as long as a brood mare's tail. Mr. Favor's been gone all night. He should have found what he's after and come back by now. Well, yeah, but... Look, Roddy, Mesa's a town, ain't it? Yeah. And a town's full of people, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, taking one thing with another, it kind of stands to reason half of them people would be women. Yeah. Then quit worrying. On the way through the hills. Oh, yeah? Well, what's the matter with you? Well, Mr. Favor ain't back yet. Well, he can just catch up with us. Let's get that herd moving. Well, we're not gonna move out till he gets back. Look, Rowdy, Mr. Favor's a... Well, I mean, Mesa's a town. I know, Mesa's a town, and it's got people in it, and half of them are women. <laughs> what did I say wrong? Well, nothing, only you said it twice. Except the first time I said it. Mr. Wishbone, look out there. Morning. 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 Uh, Dan Dooley's the name. Don't ever sleep in a livery stable if you can help it. Yeah, we'll make a real effort. A feller named uh, Rowdy Yates around? Yeah, that's me. Your boss is in jail. For what? Murder. Murder? Mr. Favor's in jail! What for? Murder! 
Stay with the herd, understand? Benton's staying with the herd. I didn't put Benton in charge. Maybe you better tell him. You men are fired, all of you. Rowdy, you can't keep us out here. Mr. Favor in jail, charged with murder. I said you're fired. Well, ain't no use hanging around a place where we ain't being paid to hang around. Let's go to town. <laughs> That rifle, it might go off. It sure will if you try anything. I want to talk to one of your passengers. Right after it's till we get to Mesa. I'll talk to that passenger here. Sorry, mister. <laughs> Everybody out. Boy, take a look inside. The driver's bleeding a little bit, but... Where's the priest? Nobody inside. He's got to be. Well, I'm not a priest. I can prove it. Well, I wouldn't doubt it, madam. Well, you watch your language. You? I I'm a clerk at the Anaconda Hotel. I've been a clerk all my life, ever since I've been old enough. I can vouch for Mr. Hooper. Yes. He's already booked me a room. And what are you? The name's Owens. As for what I am, well, I'm generally a bit shy about it. But as things are, do you mind if I get something out of it? Go ahead. Fifty-two pieces of paper. Fascinating pieces, though. Put them away. Eddie, go get your horse and Maury's. You find anything up there? Nothing. Owens. Remind me the next time we meet not to engage you in a friendly game of cards. I don't play a friendly game of cards. Now listen here, Sheriff. Now, we don't plan on going up against the law. We don't plan on tearing down this place rock by rock. But we will if you don't let Mr. Favor go. Understand? Sir? in charge of the herd. Well, Benton's in charge. But I didn't leave Benton in charge. Why aren't you over the herd? We've been fired. Fired? By who? Rowdy. Well, well, I told them I was coming in here alone, and they wouldn't listen to me. So I fired them all. Oh, 
Well, you ain't never gonna get to be trail boss unless you uh, learn how to fire a man so he stays fired. Get on back to the drive. I'll catch up. Look, we're not gonna let you sit in this jail just because some small town sheriff made a mistake. Oh, no. He didn't make no mistake. Well, you didn't kill anybody. Did you? No, of course, I didn't kill nobody. But there's evidence. Two witnesses. Sheriff! Stagecoach has been held up. Joe Wendell's wounded pretty good. Let me know what you decided to do about tearing down the jail. Are you hurt bad? Well, well, there were these ten men, see? Three. And, and they were hollering, and they were shooting. One shot was fired. They were threatening to rob us, and murder us, and, and worse. All they were looking for was a priest. Did they take anything? We, uh, we scared them off. They searched their luggage and took nothing. Sheriff? Sure. How you feel, Joe? Not too bad. Recognize any of the men? Recognized one of the horses. A sorrow with a spot on his head and a strip on his nose. That sounds like... It was. Sam Burton's. I don't know whether that's good for you or bad. We got better than a half a hundred horses in our remuda. I sure wouldn't need to steal one. I, uh... I think you and me best ride out to Burton Ranch. Now that they've had a chance to cool off a bit, maybe Mrs. Burton and the boy will remember more than the set. I sure hope so. How are you, Dan? Fine, Father Owen. I'm in a bit of a hurry. The wagon's all loaded and ready. Oh, why? You are in an almighty hurry. Ha oh. Is that blasphemy, Father? I think it'll get by, and I am in a hurry. Well, then I won't be keeping you. Except. How safe are you going to be transporting the building equipment and the stained glass for the church and, and all that money to build it all the way to Anaconda and... I, and don't try telling me the Lord will look after you. I hope he will, and I'm trying to make it a little easier for him. Goodbye, Dan. Goodbye, Father. There you are. There you are. Off you go, Father. <laughs> That's the horse we found in the barn when we got back. It's lame. Explains why the outlaws stopped here. Yeah. His friends. We don't know that, son. Well, they took Pa's horse and left him behind so Pa wouldn't follow him. The man's a trail boss, Hal. The man's a murderer. Mrs. Burton. The holding up of the stagecoach and the swapping of the horses creates considerable doubt as to Mr. Favor's guilt. Not in my mind. Now, he's got a herd of 3,000 head he's taken north. I wouldn't feel right holding him in Mesa for a month. You mean you're going to let him go? We're following the herd along toward Anaconda, where he can get a hearing before Circuit Judge Evans. Everybody's worrying about him. Nobody's remembering Pa. You want to see a man hanged, even if he ain't the one who killed your father? He is. Mrs. Burton, you'll have to go along with us, unless you want to drop the charges against him. No. We go in my wagon, Mrs. Burton. I'll send Dooley out to take over the ranch. Well, nothing seems to matter much anymore. We'll do as you say, Sheriff. <laughs> The 
a gully up ahead. It's kind of deep, though. I figure if we go down to where it widens out, we'll lose a couple hours. I'll take a look at it. Mr. Favor, I can't let you out of my sight. Well, come on with me, then. In a buggy? Sheriff, I'm going to Anaconda with you. Fortunately, the herd's going in the same direction, so uh, while I'm still with it, I'm trail boss. I got my job to do. So have I. Who's your best hand, Mr. Favor? Right here. You trust him? Well, anything happens to me, he takes over. Take over. Young man. Yeah? The law says that a deputy or a sheriff has to keep an accused man always under guard. Now, I'm a little long in the tooth and lame in the leg to go galloping off after Longhorns. That's why I'm going to deputize you to watch out for Mr. Favor there. Deputize me? Oh, no, no, no. Well, he's the boss, huh? He's also got a serious charge hanging over his head, and somebody has to keep an eye on him at all times. No, Sheriff, you, you better get yourself another boy. All right, in that case, go get him. Tell him I'm taking him back to Mesa to wait for the circuit judge, no matter how long it takes. Well, heck, I'll make a good deputy, Sheriff. Raise your right hand. You swear to perform the duties and obligations of a deputy sheriff, to keep constant watch over the prisoner assigned here, and to deliver him to the duly constituted authorities in Anaconda, say, help you, God? Yeah, I, sure. Say, I do. Hmm? Oh, I do, I do. All right. Go get him. Go ahead. Mr. Wilson, you, you just deputized one of his own men. We've well, been riding with 25 of his own men. You'll never get to Anaconda. If Mr. Favor wants to, Hal, not only he won't get to Anaconda, you and I won't either. Sheriff, witnesses were all in his hands. You did that deliberate. That's right. Well, it sounds like you believe he's innocent. What I believe don't go in a court of law, but I do believe so. You see how his men respect him? I also seen him kill my father. Keep your voice down. Let her sleep. Sleep and she'll forget. I ain't gonna forget. back and tell him to slow down the herd. I don't want them bunching up here. Oh, sure. Hey, Quint. I told you to do it. Well, can't do that, boss. Well, that was an order. Yeah, well, as a, as a cowhand, I'd have to obey that order, but as a deputy sheriff, I can't do it. Quint, why don't you ride back and tell him to slow up the herd, huh? On Saturday tonight, Mr. Favor. Well, Mr. Favor, you haven't got but half. Well, what'll you have tonight, Mr. Deputy? Stew or stew? Yeah, let's see. Uh, I believe I'll have stew. Yeah, well, that's fine. Thanks. Now, you sit here and keep that tin star of yours shiny. I'm gonna go get something to eat. Some idiot come along and took mine. Oh, really?
they wish you, uh, better make that another one. Now, I'm just going over to the buggy there to talk to the boy. You can stay here and watch me. some of this. Hey, come on. You can hate me just as good on a full stomach. Stay away from me. Now, look, why would I have wanted to kill your father? You can answer that better than me. The answer is I didn't. You're a trail boss. You got a lot of men working for you. You got a big herd to look after. You ride a horse good, you do your job. So why couldn't you let my father alone? <laughs> I don't want to live as long as you keep on living. As long as I keep remembering that gun in your hand and paw dead at your feet. Mr. Favor. Yes, ma'am. I heard you talking to Hal. I don't know what to think. Sam's dead. But what I thought I saw doesn't fit with what I see now. I called you a murderer. I can't blame you, Mrs. Burton. Well, that's not important. What is... Mr. Favor, do you know what... what Sam was before we settled at Mesa? The sheriff told me. Well, no matter how mad Hal makes you, you won't tell him about his father. No, of course not. He'll get over it. I'm sure he will. Card sharp. Playing solitaire at that. I hardly expected to see you again. Well, our uh, information was wrong. The priest wasn't coming by stagecoach. Stained glass window here, Gaff. Stealing church supplies. Your information wasn't wrong. There was no priest on that stagecoach. I was on that coach. Are you a priest? I am. Well, now, what do you know? A lion priest. Oh, no. I never denied I was one. You never asked me. Well, my name is Gaff. I'm Father Owens. Happy to know you. I, uh, got a strong box, Gaff. I'm very happy to know you. Eddie, give Maury a hand. Aren't you a little too handy with cards, Father? It amuses the children. Well, under the circumstances, it amuses me, too, now that we've caught up with you. Jeff, this thing's locked. Naturally. The key, Father. I don't have the key with me. You wouldn't want me to get nasty. The key's an anaconda. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot. You wouldn't lie. So the key's an anaconda. Shoot the lock off.
I've not mentioned this before, Mr. Favor. I've had no time to think. But now, well, I must go on alone. Why? Well, those men took the strong box from my wagon, but the money they were after wasn't in it. I still have it. Well, that seems to me like the best news we've had all day, Father. By now they know. They'll be back. So we've got 25 men against their three. Do you have 25 murderers? Father, we've run across their kind before. We know how to handle them. Well, I could use some sleep. Yeah, yeah. We all could. Mr. Favor, a man died today because of the money I'm carrying. I keep wondering. Maybe I should have given them the money. Well, now, was it yours to give, Father? Thank you. Good night. Night. Say, I'm going to sleep. Hey, yeah? Right around that boulder there. Yeah? You gonna at least let me sleep in peace? Yeah. Thank you. Where the money is. Surrounded by two or three thousand head of cattle and a pack of ignorant cowhands. We going in after it. Money's a beautiful thing, Eddie. The dead men don't get any pleasure out of spending it. Gaff. There's a man that don't like company. Yeah. A man we could perhaps sell. Would buy. The priest would. Force him into a choice between a man's death and the money. He'd have no choice. by Anaconda with the herd. How much time would we lose? Anaconda's about 12 miles west of the trail, about three days. Mm. Now, if we took Father Owen's wagon right now and left for Anaconda, we'd be there by morning. Well, that's right, but how about those Jaspers that are after the Father's money? But they wouldn't know the wagon was gone from the herd until morning. How about it, Father? You game? Let's go, Mr. Favor. I'm going with you. I won't need you for this, Roddy. Well, I sort of took an oath on this, and well, you got to clear yourself. Besides, you were the one who said... Father, that... will you tell the burdens we'll be leaving right away? All right. Prince, you help uh, hitch up the horses. And Pete, you keep moving as fast as you can. Wait a minute, boss. You have to go through with this. Just do what I tell you. I'll catch up with you sooner or later. Well, what am I supposed to do? Just keep on cooking while they're trying you for your life? That's right. All right. I'm not guaranteeing the quality of it. Well, I don't guarantee the hands will ever know the difference. I'll see, Wishbone. Stubborn show the word for him, you know it, Wishbone? Oh, that remark was entirely uncalled for, Pete Nolan. Mr. Favor's a very reasonable man. Except, of course, when he gets stubborn.
Heard this is a little bit too rocky. Wagon could bust a wheel on him. We'll have to clear him out. Anything wrong? It's too rocky for the wagon. We'll have to clear some out. You can use another pair of hands. Thank you, Paulie. Mr. Faber, there's something I've got to say to you now, before we get to Anaconda. Yes, sir? I'm not going to testify against you. Whatever you think is right. I think testifying against you would be wrong. You're not a killer, Mr. Faber. I've seen enough of those. All those years when Sam was what he was. What about your son? Hal's a good boy. He'll listen to me once you've gone. And he doesn't have to remember seeing you and Sam together. I hope so. No wonder he's such a good boy. Got such a good mother. Does it? Should we get going? The boy's gone. Couldn't have gone far. He was here just a minute ago. Can't leave without him. No sign of the boy or his rifle. I can't understand why he ran away or where. He's after you if that's the kid, boss. Well, uh, thank you, son. Found our friends if you hadn't appointed them out. Now suppose we go join them, huh? I suggest you drop those guns if you don't want him to die. No, madam. Please stay where you are. Eddie, let the boy go to his mother. That's my father's. It was your father's. I despise domestic scenes. Shall we end this one quickly? Well, father, we meet a third time and a final one. You will kindly tell me where that money is at once. Well, it's there somewhere. All right, go collect their guns. Now, the rest of you. I want everything in that wagon unloaded and open. 
If you force us to do it, we'll have to kill you first. What's the matter? That window too heavy? Boys are needed. Tend to have that money, Father. Now, I realize quite well you would rather die before you turn over church funds to me. But would you let others die? They'll have to kill us all sooner or later anyway. Mr. Favor may be right. But if he's wrong, do you want to take that chance? The money isn't mine. All right. Who will be first, Father? The boy or his mother? The boy, then. All right, Eddie. No! Don't tell him, Father. They wouldn't have found you if I hadn't been shooting Mr. Favor. I'm sorry, Mr. Favor. True repentance. Well, Father. I'll tell you where the money is. Well, you restore my faith, Father. Where is it? <laughs> Mr. Faber, I resent you putting your hands on me. Further, I have no intention of being led to the law like a sheep to a slaughter pen. You'll have to kill me yourself. Either you or the good father there. Well, I didn't think either of you would. So if you'll all excuse me. Wait a minute, Jeff. Sheriff Wilson deputized me. I'll kill you. In cold blood? Yeah. All I have to do is remember that you're the one who killed Burton. Well, I'll leave you to your memory. <laughs> well, money's saved now, but where is it? In the simplest of all places. The one place cunning men like these would never think of looking. I could. 
Now, let's see how good you are as a drover. You can ride back a drag for the next three days. Leaves come in all colors and sizes, but whether they're Sonora Reds or White Faces, Sabinas or Rustys, they've all got one thing in common, no brains. During the day, you've got to lead them to make sure they don't walk into cactus patches where they scrape their hides, or over stony ground where they cut their hooves, or off the side of a mountain where they break their neck. And at night, somebody's got to pick a sleeping place for them. That's usually me. I'm Pete Nolan, trail scout. Ain't you got the hang of that yet, Walser? All right. But that don't mean I'm gonna quit trying. Why bother? Takes my mind off things. Oh, yeah? What things? Cattle, mostly. I hate them. You sure picked yourself a right job? Oh, I wasn't a drover all the time. Oh, if I was to tell you the story of my life. Uh, please don't. This day's only got 24 hours in it. You wouldn't believe it anyway. Hey, Seuss. See? You do my laundry for me. I mean for pay. I'm sorry, senor, but I must get back to the remuda. You see, if ain't cows, it's horses. Would you believe me if I was to tell you that before the war I owned a plantation, 30,000 acres in cotton, 20-room house, Servants to do my ever bidding. Yeah. Did you? No, but it would have been kind of nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Senor Rowdy, Senor Walter. Hold still. Want me to hold it for you? Mr. Favor, the time has come when I can't thread a needle without help. I'll I'll turn Cook's louse. Somebody call me. Must she get back in there? You're fit to be seen. Yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone. Maybe you've had him peeling too many taters. That didn't come from peeling potatoes, Mr. Favor. That come from trying to rope a steer. His first mistake was falling off the horse. What was the second? turning his back on the steer. He's just lucky I ain't sewing up him. <laughs> Mountain country ahead, Mr. Favor. It's gonna be a little rough. In that case, we better grace the beeves another day before moving on. All right. Want something? I seek your chief. I'm the trail boss, if I can help you. You have many horses. Yeah? Why? Many horses were stolen from our tribe. Why do you come to us? I will tell you, after you have shown me all your horses. I can tell you right now. We captured three of your men by the stream. I want to see your horses. Rowdy and Jesus and Walter went down to the stream. 
maybe an hour ago. If any of those men are hurt... They were not hurt. Not yet. Take a look. You think he's telling the truth, boss? I don't know. We could take care of it and then light out after the others. Well, they could be watching us from any of these hills. Why don't they come down and ask like any decent human being? Playing it safe, I guess. I just hope we are. It's our scalps. What have they been waiting for? If it's our scalps, I don't mind waiting. They got no right tying up our men. Hold it, Wish. They do not have our horses. You are certain of this? Pano! matter of guns between us. Glad of that. Kawa tells me there are no horses of ours in your remuda. Good. Good for you. It is not good for us. That means you'll have trouble hunting for food. We've got some scrub cattle we can spare. No. We seek only that which is ours. them. They wouldn't accept any of our cattle, and they didn't claim any of our horses were theirs. It's probably wanted a good look at our remuda, that's all. They could have done that without being seen themselves. Just the same, I'll bet they come back. Afraid you're wrong. All I know is I ain't gonna miss them. Said she wished she was a man so she could live the real exciting life we do. Hope you didn't disappoint her. I may be dumb, but I'm not that dumb. I didn't exactly come out and say so, but I sort of led her to believe that trail herding was just one big high spot after another. Don't your conscience ever bother you, boy? Not in this heat. You know, I got a good idea, Mr. Wishbone. Why don't we go out ahead of the herd and let them eat our dust for a while? Yeah, that's a great idea. Should I ask Mr. Paver? No. I wouldn't want to see him get hurt. How would he get hurt by that? When he falls off his horse laughing at such an idiot suggestion. Well, what's idiot about? Say we're out in front. Then they start to stampede. You figured out run them in this wagon? I never thought of that. Guess I don't know very much. Well, you're improving. You know more now than you did two minutes ago. Hey, Walter. Walter. Time to relieve Jesus. Mr. Favor, would you believe me if I was to tell you that before the war I used to own a riverboat? Did you? Oh, everybody always asked me that.
Well, if you hurry, you can get my spot by the fire. It's still warm. Gracias. The night is cold. Yeah. It's always cold on a trail, even when it's hot. You know why? Si, senor. I have been shaving for many years now. Have a good night. With horses? <laughs> <laughs> Would you believe me if I was to tell you I was once a general in the Confederate Army? Oh, shut up. Horses. I told you it was those Indians. It make much difference who it was. We can't chase him afoot. Take a look at him, Wish. He may be hurt. We'd better bring in the night Riders. Aye, right, now we'll have 3,000 head of cattle, 20 drovers, and two horses. Hmm. How you feel? Uh, oh, not too good, Mr. Favor. Anything broken? No, just an oh. almighty big lump, as near as I can oh. tell. You remember anything about what happened? Oh, I went after a stray horse and I got jumped. Hey, Bermuda. How's the herd? Fine, sir. Where do you think you're going? After the thieves. Alone? Sure, if I pick up their trail, then I can find out which way they're headed. And then what? Hey, there's Quince. He must have heard those shots. What's keeping him? that some of our horses scattered the other side of that ridge. Go get them. Half a string. That's all we could find, boss. They sure took the top ones. It is managed to hold on to the others. Why aren't we going after them? They've had a good six hours to hide out, and Comanches can hide out pretty good. Well, horses leave tracks, you know. We've got a herd to watch after. Pete, what's the nearest town? Wayville. It's about a day's ride. We'll graze the herd here two, three days, maybe. That'll give you time enough to buy new horses, if you can find any for sale. I'll find them. You need some help to bring them in. Jesus, you'll go along. Si, senor favor. I'd like to go along, too, boss. Peace level needs some help if he runs across those Comanches. You all right? I'd appreciate it if you let me go too, Mr. Favor. You're not in very good shape. Uh, nothing wrong with me except my head, and that don't count. You got three days at the outside. Good luck. <laughs> Somebody needs help.
Cruz will handle better if you'll hold on to the reins. Seven. I'm sure of that. I was asleep. My parish is rather large, you see. Oh, I'm forgetting to properly thank you, young men. Oh, I'm Pete Nolan. That's Rowdy Yates, Bill Walter, and Jesus Patina. We're trail drovers. We're on the Sedalia Trail out here. I have a ridiculous name, Lucius Porcius. I should be large, red-faced. I'm afraid I'm wandering, and, and I shall be late. I do enjoy christenings. Well, are you going into Wayville? Oh, goodness, no. Uh, the Sulphur Creek Ranch. It's quite an occasion for Arvid Lacey, his firstborn. You said a ranch. Uh, would they have horses for sale there? Oh, indeed they would. That's where I bought uh, Lucifer. Now, I, I really should change his name. Well, we need to buy some horses fast. Well, why don't you ride into the ranch with me? It's much closer than Wayville. What do you say, Roddy? Why not? All right. Keep your eye on old Lucifer. <laughs> I'll try to stay awake. <laughs> Just like me, don't he? He sure does, Mr. Lacey. Harvard Lacey Jr. ain't got a tooth in his head yet. You know, right from left or the time of day, or even that he's my son. But the time's gonna come when he'll know, and he's gonna get everything I've got and more. Williams, that preacher show up yet? No sign of him. No, it ain't right, my son being more than a month old, not even christened proper yet. We live near town, Harvard. I told you even before we were married, that when I look out of that window, I don't want to see anything but my own land. You told me, Arvid. Let me help you. I can carry it myself. Claire. You better get out of here, Brad. I've got to talk to you. I'm his wife. I'm his brother. And both of us belong to him, just like his horses. Clara, I, I'd like to tell you something. You'd like to tell me something. There's lots of things you'd like to do. But Arvid does them, and you... You better go out the same door you came in. The back door. Preacher's here, Mr. Lacey. Hmm. Never waited so long for a man in all my life. Got some fellas with him. Hey, this is some spread. Finest around here. Ah, preacher. You rounding up guests for the christening? <laughs> well, not really, except I ran into him on the south road. <laughs> you know, that's almost exactly what I did. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, they're shopping for horses, Mr. Lacey. Well, they come the right place. Not the right time. I'm afraid you'll have to wait. Well, we're kind of in a hurry. How many horses do you need? Forty or fifty. It's a lot of horses. What do you need them for? Well, we got a herd on the Sedalia Trail. The Indians stole about half our remuda. Uh, that's a bad habit they got. Well, there ain't a ranch closer than a hundred miles have that many horses to sell. Make a deal. You stay for the christening, I'll do business right after. I'm liable to be in a good frame of mind. Uh, it's my firstborn. What do you say? We haven't got much choice. No, go anyplace else, it just take more time. Uh, this man with sense. Williams, go look after the horses, give him a good feed, will you? Gentlemen, come on inside. <laughs>
Well, well, now that my son's got himself a name, I invite you all to eat up and drink up and just generally enjoy yourselves. Come on, help yourselves. Hey, preacher, you know, folks a hundred miles around laughed at me when I up and got married to a girl young enough to be my daughter. Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh, it's just your Christian duty to be charitable. It's my business to know when I'm being laughed at, and they sure laughed at me, didn't they? Not anymore, they ain't, though. I, uh, I better get the rest of the food. Hey, where's Brad? He wasn't feeling good. Oh, come on, Preach. You got a long drive back to town. You better fortify yourself. Hey, there's plenty of food. Help yourselves. Come on. Well, actually, we came to buy horses, Mr. Lacey. Oh, you can't buy them hungry. Well, we're kind of in a hurry. Yeah. Well, there's, uh... There's a bunch in the corral back of the barn there. You take a look at them. I'll still be here. All right. Good. Williams, will you just sort of keep an eye on them? Sure, Mr. Lacey. The Christian ain't was very nice. I like parties. So my wife. We used to have two, three hundred guests. But you told me you never got married. I did. Couldn't afford to feed them guests anyway. Yo, Pete. Mr. Lacey seems like a nice fella. Yeah. Mrs. Lacey's all right, too. Yeah, but you gotta remember, she's Mrs. Lacey. Hey, senores. I think maybe my eyes are not so good. This is one of my top horses. And the boss is cutting horse. All the missing horses are in there. <laughs> it wasn't the Indians. No, it wasn't the Indians. Go get Lacey. Now, oh, wait a minute. Lacey knew we were from the drive. Still, he let us look at the horses anyway. Yeah. Well, he's got more men than we have. Well, you got any ideas then? We'll just have to go ahead and pay him for them. Pay for our own horses? Give a horse even a bonus? You must be crazy. <laughs> Mr. Lacey didn't invite you inside the corral. Well, Lacey's a horse thief. That ain't a nice thing to say. Well, I wouldn't mind repeating it. Rowdy. I heard a gunshot. It struck a wrong note. That's not the proper way to celebrate a christening. I was trying to bust into the corral, Mr. Lacey. Oh, no. You ought to know better than that. Those are our horses in there, mister. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Then you'll know what they're worth. I'll tell you what. Since this is a special day, you can have them at half the going price. Those are our horses. Why should we pay for them? I got expenses, mister. Now, where else could you get as fine a string of horses as that at half price? Then you admit you stole them. The sheriff in town's got pretty big ears. They don't stretch this far, though. All right, we'll buy. Pete, what are you saying? We got no other choice. By the time we get the law out here, there won't be any herd left. You're a practical man. The kind I like to do business with. Take care of guns. All right, let's go back to the house and make the sale legal. Legal? Say I'm not a fair man. You still have some money left. Well, this bill say it looks all right to me. I hope you won't mind too much Rowdy spouting off like that. He's kind of hot-headed. Uh, as long as there's a profit, I don't mind anything. Well, he's young, that's what it is. When you're young, you get steamed up about things like horse thieves. Horse traders, I should have said. <laughs> Find out some of the rest of us get excited about things like horse thieves. Tell them to get away from that door. I'll pull this trigger. Get away from that door. All of you. You all right, Mr. Lacey? Tell them the only way you're going to stay all right is if they turn their guns over to us. I could tell you to. 
Yeah, you could. None of you will get out of here alive. Well, you'd never know. Williams! Yeah, Mr. Lacey? You and the others, turn your guns over to the drovers. But, Mr. Lacey! You heard me. Rowdy? Yeah? When you got all their guns, let me know. Yeah, I'll do that, Pete. Get upset, Clara. We just had a business disagreement. Why did they take the guns? Well, it was a violent disagreement. Is that our money? Yeah. Now, you got some money left. Well, what about a bill of sale, Pete? All signed, sealed, and totally legal. Well, good. Now we own those horses twice. I brought you men here. Yeah, I think you better come along with us, too. Why? Why did you take that money and the guns? Well, it was uh, business, uh, ma'am. I don't believe you. Are you thieves? Your husband is, ma'am. Those horses in the corral were stolen from our remuda last night. Sure they were. All right, now you act real surprised, Clara. I suppose I shouldn't be, but I am. Why, Harvard? I'm 50 years old. I want to land. A house, stock, I wanted you. I want a kid to be called Arvid Lacey Jr. And when you're 50 years old, you haven't got time to pick and choose. You grab. All right, I grab. And now? I'll keep on grabbing. Don't move, anybody. Put your guns down, Drovers. Put them down. Stay on your feet. I am very much afraid to die, but I could get one or two of them. You haven't got a chance, Jesus. Brad. Yeah? Brad, put your gun away. You crazy? You said once you'd do anything I ever asked you to. Shut up. Remember? That was the night you said you loved me. I told you to shut up. Come on, let's get out of here. You too, preacher. You've seen enough laces, not gonna let you live. Yes, I suppose I should. Is there anything I can say to you, Arvid, that would well, save my soul, cause me to repent? I don't know, preacher. If you can think of something, come back and tell me about it. Mr. Porteous, I'm going with you. No, stay where you are, Lacey. My son and I are going with you. Clara. You can go where you want, but you leave my son here. He's my son. And mine. He belongs to me. Clara. I'll come after you in whatever corner of the world you hide. Walter, hitch up the preacher's horse. You get started for town. We'll keep him pinned in here for a while. Everybody take cover. They must have missed a gun someplace in the house. Jean didn't come from the house. Came from out that way somewhere. Lacey must have some friends out there. Mrs. Lacey. Has your husband got any hired hands that are not inside the house? No. You better get inside. No, I'm not going back. We don't even know who's doing the shooting. You can't stay out here, not with that baby. He's right, Mrs. Lacey. I would be happy if they did not strike the bell. I do not like the sound. Mrs. Lacey, I'm not going to give you a choice. Now, you get inside. Mr. Porteous. Yes? You take my son. No, Mrs. Lacey. 
Won't somebody help me? I can't take him back in there. Look like a Comanche. Probably the same tribe that came to the herd. A flesh wound. That's all. That all it was. Well, it's a little more than that, Walter, but it'll be all right. I, I thought maybe it was. Would you believe it if I told you that right outside of Vicksburg, last time I was shot, nobody expected me to live? Yeah, yeah. I'd believe you. Would you? Yeah. Walter's dead. There must be a bunch of them Comanches out there. Once they start to make their move, we can hold them off a little longer. And after that? Well, what do you want to do? We're going to need some help. Give the guns back to Lacey and his men. Give their guns back? Are you crazy? They'd just soon shoot us in the back. Not as long as those Comanches are out there, they wouldn't. Supposing we fight off the Comanches. What do you think he's gonna do? Just pat us on the head and send us on our way? We'll have to worry about that when we come to it. Mrs. Lacey, you and the preacher go first. Take my chances out here with the Comanches. You're just as dead one way as the other. What do you say, Jesus? I don't know what to say. I say we go inside. How to get those guns inside? We'll cover you. Speak your piece. You men better take your guns back before the Comanches decide to rush the house. Thanks. So you come back here because there's no place else to go, huh? Now, this is my place. You understand? It's my place. I'm the boss. Without your guns, the Comanches would burn your place right around your ears. We've got guns now. Clara, take my son to the bedroom. Stay there with him. Shut. Dinger. Cover the back of the house. Williams, you get up on the roof, cover the corral. All right, Mr. Lee. Thurman, you... Mexican, you get in the office and cover the window. Yes, sir. Brad. Brad. You joining the men, or maybe you'll be more comfortable with Clara. Preacher, you find a safe place to hide and start praying. No, I don't think so. Will you shoot yourself some Comanches? I can't understand why the Comanches are attacking this house. Well, I'll tell you, we stole some of their horses and killed a couple of their braves doing it. Yes, I thought it might be something like that. Well, now, Preacher, just don't you get proud. I'll not use this gun against the Indians. What do you want it for? For afterwards, Mr. Lacey for afterwards. Give me a couple of more, Mrs. Lacey. That dinger, he's like a starved horse. He can afford to lose some weight. There's plenty of food. Brad, come and get something to eat. My wife spoke to you, Brad. Remember? The woman you love? I'm not hungry. 
How long can we hold out? I don't know much about a thing like this. You'll find out. How long is it to town? Six hours. Which way? No, no, no. We don't have any men to spare. I think I can make it. Look, the Indians won't wait that long. It's dark now. I think I'll have a chance. I said you're not going. Who's going to stop me? Better get some help. But you ain't the one to try. Why not? You get lost. I'll risk it. I won't. Thurman, he knows every rabbit trail, gopher hole ridge, and gully a hundred miles around. Yeah, well, what else does he know? Enough to stay away from the sheriff. I got friends in town. He'll bring him back. Times like this, a man needs friends. Yeah, shoot us in the back after we've driven the Indians off, huh? Mister, you want to see Clara's scalp dangling from some Indian's belt? All right, now, Thurman, you ought to have no trouble making it. A couple of saddle horses out there. Pick one and then try the back meadow. I'll make it easy, Mr. Lacey. Fool still got that accordion hanging around his neck. Yeah, he'd feel downright lonely without that accordion. And being out there with all them Comanches around, man could easily feel lonely. Uh, I'm not sure I want that fellow to make it. Senor Wishbone is a very fine cook. I would like to be eating now even his biscuits. Well, if we ever get back to camp, I'll tell him what you said. Maybe he'll bake you up a special batch. Senor Pita, I was only joking. You know, once this is over, Brad, we're gonna have a lot to talk about. We're alive when it's over. We'll be alive. I'm not ready to die yet. You think dying's gonna wait on your pleasure? I know it will, Brad. I know it will. May I come in, Mrs. Lacey? Of course. I just fed him. Is he asleep? Not yet. I'm an old man. I couldn't stay out in that room. So much hatred in the air. So much hatred. Some of it's my fault. Yes. It confuses things. Life should be simpler, but... St. Augustine wrote, it is not every bad man that will ever be good, but there will be no good man who was not at one time bad. I've been bad. So bad. But you will be good. And now we must cry with Isaiah, Watchman, what of the night?
He ain't got anybody with him. But the Indians aren't stopping him. Maybe they're gone. Maybe. Looks like there's something wrong with him. Yeah, he don't look like a man coming back the way he wants to. I'm going out. Keep me covered. What happened to you? Banshees, what? Horses. Horses and lacy. That's what they want. And you didn't get through. Uh, you didn't get word to. Banshees, what? Life. Lacy's life. They hurt me, Mr. Lacy. They hurt me real bad. Thurman's dead. No help's coming. Shut up. He said that all they want is Lacey. They're afraid to attack against all the guns we have. Thurman said that it was out of his head. This was an old Comanche trick to get us to come out to them one by one. We're not going to fall for the trick. We can hold out, and we're going to hold out. It's no trick, and you know it. If they don't get what they want, we're all going to die. Why don't you go cry on Clara's shoulder? Now, anybody else got something to say? I wouldn't force a man to go out there to those Comanches. Yeah, well, I wouldn't stop them either, though. And what about you? I don't know, Mr. Lacey. It adds up easy enough for me. I didn't think you could add two and two. And right, now the both of you, go take Thurman around the back. Clara. You choose. Choose what? Brad's right. The Comanches don't get what they want, they'll hit us with everything they got, all at once. Choose what? Which Lacey they get. They don't want Brad. They don't care. One Lacey's as good as another. It's up to you. Choose. It's not up to me. You can't make it be up to me. You can't make up your mind. I'll make it up for you, for both of you. I go. All right, get away from that door. You gonna shoot me down if I don't? Dead men don't frighten Brad. I'm not gonna let you go. I'm not gonna let you die, a big man. Those engines want the big man. It isn't you. It wasn't you who stole their horses and killed the Indians. All right. You stole the horses. I was going to show Claire that you're not the only Lacey who can do things. After I sold those horses up north, I was going to take Claire away from you. I was going to make you learn how it feels to be second best. Now, now whatever happens depends on me, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Get away from that door. Comanches will keep their word. 
We didn't hear him give it. Senor Pete, Senor Ali, look! I guess they want more. Now hold your fire. Could be a trick. They don't need tricks anymore. I'm going out there. Keep us coming. See. that stole your horses and killed your men. What do you want now? To take what is ours and depart in peace. Go ahead and take your horses. We're not going to stop you. Do you want me to come in? I want my son. newspapers, they write about the lawlessness of the West. But they don't know what it really means to live that way. It means in time of trouble, you've got no help but the quickness of your own right hand. No judge but your own good sense. Especially on trail herd. Most of the time, you're a hundred miles from anyone wearing a lawman star. So keep an order is up to me. Name's Gil Favor, trail boss. Jumpy about? Well, I'm not jumpy. He just came up on my blind side, that's all. Yeah. You're, um, nine. Yeah, that's right, Andy and I. Can't keep your new men straight yet. Well, it's only been a couple of days. Funny the four of you all joining from the same town all at once. Is it? Yeah, friends, I suppose, huh? Yeah, more or less. Where's the one I sent you out with? Mac? Well, I was just looking for him. How'd you get separated? Well, he went up that draw there. I, I guess he thought he saw a couple of strays or something. I was hazing those cattle over there. Yeah, well, we ain't got all day. Let's go get him. Hey, Mac! Mac don't hear so good. Yeah, he hears all right. Now, wait a minute, look. Look over there, that's his horse. Yeah, maybe he got thrown or hurt or something. No. No, he's dead. What do you mean, dead? Look over there. Hey, that must be the stray he was going after. It said Brandon on the side. You. Murder?
Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Just like you said. Good shot. What I'd like to know is how did you know about it? Hey, where'd that steer go? He's just gone, that's all. He always is. What do you mean it always is? What is this, anyway? You and me better go back to camp. You got some explaining to do. And you didn't see anyone else? Nope, no sign of anyone, no tracks, nothing. I'd have to say there was no one around except Nye here. You got anything to say, boy? I didn't do it. Well, maybe it could have been Indians passing by. We haven't seen hiding her hair or redskins for a long time. There's no sign. Yeah, that's true. They always leave a sign up there about. And it could have been a stray scout, a hunter, even a renegade white. Yeah, but why would he want to kill McAndrews? He didn't even take anything anyway. Yeah, an Indian would have took the horse. Looks to me like he might have been one of them grudge killings, somebody that didn't like him. That'd have to be somebody who knew him pretty well. Better than any of us. How about it, Andy? You know anybody who didn't like him? No, sir. Or any reason to kill him? No. No, I can't think of any. All I know is that he knew we were going to find the Kanders dead even before we spotted them. How do you know that? Well, I, I saw that steer. I want to hear more about that steer. You sure you weren't seeing things? I wasn't seeing things. I saw a murder was branded right across the side of it. Madre de Dios. The murder steer. Now, that's nothing but a legend. Maybe so, but I saw it with my own eyes. And McAndrews is dead, legend or not. See, si. wherever the murder steer is seen, someone dies. It is always so, all over the plains. That's right. We heard about it back in Talbot when Jesus and me went in for the flour and salt. It showed up there a few weeks back, and since then, three people have been murdered. It's really got him spooked. See? Si. For it comes from nobody knows where and disappears. Nobody knows how. But always, somebody is dead. Nobody knows why. Or who will be next. And now it's come here. And you brought it with you, you Talbot men. McAndrews. Dead. Where were you two? Riding drag, like you told us. That's right, Mr. Favre, they was. You know anybody who'd want to kill McAndrews for any reason? No. I guess the murder steer don't need no reason, Mr. Favre. I don't believe in phantom steers killing men. Neither do you two. Now, who do you think did it and why? I don't know. Neither do I. But you got an idea, haven't you? Maybe I have. Maybe you think there's going to be more. Maybe that, too. You'd better tell me all about it, everything you know. Like, for a start, why you four men all left Talbot together to join the herd? I told you. We were heading up north. It wouldn't have anything to do with the murders, would it? I don't know anything about them. And neither do you, do you? But McAndrews was your friend. Or was he? Well, at least you're going to help me bury him. Get a shovel. Don't know as I like it, that murder steer around. Well, who does? Mr. Wishbone, how'd that murder steer get started, killing folks? It don't rightly do the killing. Leastwise, not for the usual thing. No, it's a omen, I guess. Got started down in the Pegasus country a while back. Yeah, some Jasper murdered an unarmed crippled rancher trying to steal a steer off him. So all the cripple's friends tracked him down and killed him. They got mad and branded murder on the steer and then turned him loose on the prairie. Now he roams all over. Wherever he shows up. You think maybe we'll see him? Oh, shut up. Find anything? There's a steer up there, all right. No phantom, either. But I lost his trail in the herd tracks. There's some wagon tracks over ways, too. Oh, yeah? Not ours, huh? Huh. Well, I guess other wagons come through here now and then. 
I guess. Finished? You want to say anything over them? I guess not. Suit yourselves. I got his things for the sheriff. Sheriff? What sheriff? Well, the sheriff back in town, but uh, I think we ought to send for him, don't you? You think he'd come all the way out here? We're probably not even in his county anymore. Yeah, but boy. Look, just... I'm no lawman, neither are you. And we got a herd to worry about, first of all. We start getting mixed up with sheriffs, we're liable to be here till spring waiting for a trial. Yeah, but one of these men liable to be the killer. Now, you don't know that for sure. As long as they keep their feet into themselves and do their job, it's no business of mine or yours. And as far as we know, he could have been hit by a stray bullet, just an accident. Come on. Wagon tracks, and they're not ours. I guess that explains the tracks you saw. Company, Mr. Favor. Yes, sir. Right pretty company, too. We don't see many folks like you, ma'am, out here on the trail. Thank you. I'm Ab Carter, Mr. Favor, and this is my wife, Callie. How do you do, Mr. Favor? Ma'am, it's an unexpected pleasure. Oh, did you come in over the hills there? No, sir. We came right along your trail straight from Talbot. From Talbot, too. You must know some of these men. Well, sure. That's Andy and I there, ain't it? Gus Price and Adair. Sure. Howdy, boys. And did you know a man named McAndrews? Hand with the Barclay outfit? Sure. He here, too? He was. He's dead. You don't mean that... not out here. But we came here for protection, to get away from that thing. The murder steer? What else? Half the town's leaving, running away. We figured if we could ride along with you as far as the Arkansas settlements, we'd be safe. But now, McAndrews... don't make sense. How many men been killed so far? In town? Let's see. Uh, three. Now, four. It's enough to start a panic. It's a blame steer. It's got him scared sick. There's no telling where he'll show up next. But to run away, leave your home, all your belongings. Well, that was Callie's idea. You didn't require much persuasion, Abner. Well, I guess not. To tell the truth, it's only because there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's, it can be anyone, anytime, anywhere. Here, for instance. And not just Talbot, man, either. It could be one of us. Ay, Dios mio. Then you will let us ride along with you, Faber? Just to humor a woman's weakness, Mr. Faber. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Faber, thanks. Looks like rain for a morning. I might have a little shower. Hey, boss, you sure you know what you're doing? What would you do different? Well, I think there's a murderer here. Oh? You know who it is? Yeah, I think it's Andy Neither. Are you sure enough about that you want to sentence him to hang? Well, uh, no. What about the murder steer, then? Yeah, that is a puzzle. I'll look around in the morning. Maybe some more killing by then, boss. Got you panicked too, Pete? No, but we don't need all the strain. You could send them packing. Oh, I could. Do you think that'd stop the killing? Maybe any of us. Yeah, but you said yourself, there's bad marshy ground up ahead. You need a local man to get us through the bogs. And you said Andy and I was the best man, knows the country. I don't know, but we can get by without him. Sure. But then we'd never find out about the murder steer. Well, what are you trying to do? Play detective or something? I'd think so, but it'll show up sooner or later. Yeah, well, I 
hope when it does, some of us are still alive. Some bad weather coming up. I want to talk to Pete. Yeah. Well, he's up in front with Nye and Adair. They're scouting bogs. Yeah. You see the steer? No, but I know how it disappeared. Oh, how? Wow. It was lead, horse tracks alongside of it. Whoever did it was smart, though. They led it right into our herd tracks, making it impossible to trail. Well, I still think it was one of those men from Talbot. Let's see how it could be. It'd be pretty hard to manage that steer without someone seeing him. You don't think they had anything to do with this, do you? I didn't say that. But if one of them's behind the murders, he's got to have a partner on the outside working that steer around the herd. Yeah, well, that wouldn't be hard to do, scouting up in front. Yes, yeah, Pete, come on. Where's Nine of Deer? Just over that hill. We split up looking for a way through them bogs. Did you find anything? Yeah, nothing that'll do us that much good. Better. Look. You sure weren't seeing things, Roddy. Let's go. Drop down into that drawer. Come on. Wait a minute. Down there. It's caved in. Must have been somebody he knew to get up that close to him. And it could have been his horse kicked him, too. Oh, sure. It could have been the steer back over him, huh? Look. Mr. Faber, I swear. Save it. Better let me have your gun. Steer could have been hidden down in this drawer easy enough. Of course, uh, you didn't see anything of it coming this way, I suppose. No. But I wasn't paying much attention. Well, it couldn't have gone far. We should be able to track it easy. Not now. Herd's almost here. The storm could break down on us. We'll have to get the herd through the bogs and onto high ground before night. Yeah, but what about herd the... comes first. So we'll have to wait. Abner, get a hold on yourself. Callie, maybe we made a mistake. Maybe we ought to go back. Now, there's no mistake. Now, we'll go back when the time comes. Well, what do you mean? When it's safe, of course. Mm. 
not. Who is it? They said they saw it. Only two of you left. You've been riding drag? Like you told me. You better stay there. Plenty of company. Be safer. You ride up front with me. Back to work. See something up there, Jim? See? Nope. It's funny, I thought for a minute. What, the murder steer? No, it's probably nothing. So, they didn't get me yet. Everything's going wrong. Accidents all over the place. Always do when you're in a hurry. Or when the men are nervous and jumpy. And whose fault's that? What do you want me to do? Get rid of them all. All of them from Talbot. Then we can relax again. I'm afraid it's too late for that. Come on, let's get moving. Yeah! Not much of a bed ground. It'll have to do. Try and quiet him down. Let's put him to bed, boys. Nye. It's about time you and me had a talk, isn't it? Well, it's just there's, there's nothing to talk about, Mr. Favor. I, I told you, I didn't have anything to do with those I things. I know. You don't know who did it or why. But you've got an idea. It's only an idea, not a very good one. Three dead men back in Talbot. They were friends of yours, too, weren't they? Well, I, I knew them. It was more than that. The three of them, Gus, Dare, McAndrews, and you, were all in something together, weren't you? Isn't that why, when they were killed, you all left town so fast and together? You're just guessing. Pretty good guess, though, isn't it? The seven of you had something in common, otherwise you wouldn't have been picked up and pursued. Now, what was it? Nothing. It, it wasn't anything. Look, boy, there's only two of you left. That means either Gus or you is next on the list. Maybe. Anyway, you, you can't help. You try me. I can't. I, I can't. I told you, I don't know anything for sure. Only two left. It could also mean one of the two of you is the killer. No. No, we're both on that list, I'm sure of that. All right, somebody else. All right, then who? I don't know. It, it could be anybody. That's what's so frightening. Ab Carter, he's from Talbot. Or his, his wife. That isn't very likely, is it? Isn't it? They're here. I mean the woman. Well, maybe... 
Maybe she isn't everything you think she is. I haven't thought too much about what she is. She is a little bit young to be married to Carter. He's rich. That's reason enough, isn't it? I guess so. Could it be that uh, you were a little sweet on her yourself? Well, no more than any of the other men in Talbot. Anyway, that was a long time ago. Before she was married? Mr. Favor, I don't go around romancing married women. Maybe some of the others did, but not me. Could that be what this is all about? I don't know. If that was her that day with Sam Buck. Sam Buck? Yeah, he... Now, listen, I... I told you once, I don't know anything about it. Now, don't ask me. Please, just don't ask me. Look, if you won't talk to me, how can I help you? Mr. Favor, all I'm asking is a chance to defend myself. Please, just let me have my gun back. See you gave him his gun back. That's right. Look, Mr. Favor, we've been talking. We figured this is going on long enough. If that's so. Well, you got to do something, or we aim to. What do you suggest I do? I know what I'd do. I'd hang a Jasper up. No? You're convinced he's the killer? That's right, Mr. Favor. So am I. I don't need any more proof. You don't, huh? You've got all the evidence you need. And you've elected yourself judge and jury. How about you, Roddy? You part of this little group? Well, uh... No, I, I think he's guilty. I think, I think we ought to send him back to Talbot. Oh, you're real good. You want the law to do the dirty work. Dirty work? You get a fair trial. Oh, sure. Were these witnesses testifying? Well, then send them all back to Talbot, like I said. Whole kit and caboodle of them. Well, now, sir, I hope you don't think that we, my wife and I, have anything to do with all this. Then who does, Mr. Carter? Well, it seems apparent, as much as I hate to think it, for I always liked the boy, but he was seen in the vicinity not once, but twice. Is that so, Mr. Favor? And now I come to think of it, it seems to me he was seen close by one of the killings in town, too, if I'm not mistaken. Are you? No. No, he's not. I discovered one of them. Jake Davis, the first. I went to his room. He was a friend of mine. What about it, Mr. Favor? We'll do the job. You say so. Isn't that nice? You want everybody in on your lynching. Just because a man goes to visit a friend, because he comes riding over the wrong hill at the wrong time, you want to string him up. You want to kill him out of fear, out of plain, stupid, superstitious fear. Oh, I got a bunch to be proud of here. How about it, Teddy? You proud of yourself? Asus? Quince? Wishbone? Ain't you proud? Now get out of my sight, all of you. Out of luck, boy. You two, get out! Thanks. Do the same for anyone. Don't mean I believe you. I don't know, boss. Hope you're right about him and that nobody else dies. That was very commendable, Mr. Favor. What do you think, Mrs. Carter? You think Andy Nye's the killer? How should I know? I only know what I've heard. You knew him back in Talbot. What did you think of him then? Well, he 
Oh, he seemed to be a nice boy. Boy? He can hardly be much younger than you. Maybe you even knew him better than the other. Oh, I liked him, Mr. Favor, until he got in with a bad crowd. You mean the dead man, like Jake Davis? Yes. Yes, they were part of it. Andrew, Sedair, Gus Price? Yes. It was really too bad. And Sam Buck? Sam Buck? No. No, he never had anything to do with that crowd at all. What made you think so? Oh, just something somebody mentioned. Tell me about this Sam Buck. Who is he? Sam Buck is dead, Mr. Faith. He was a young man who lived in Talbot. But he was brutally murdered some months ago. You mean before the murder steer showed up? Yes. At least two months. You think there could be any connection? I wouldn't know. I suppose not. Who killed Sam Buck, Mrs. Carter? They never found out. One of the dead men, maybe? Or Andy Nye? I couldn't even guess. But do you think he might have? Do you think him capable? I don't know. He had a wild streak. You never can tell for sure what a person will do. No, you can't, can you? What does he say about me? Nothing. He didn't even talk about you. Except to say that it could be anyone behind the murder steer. Even a woman. Me? <laughs> Bad crowd, huh? Five of them dead. Wonder why. Can't you think of any reason, Mrs. Carter? I wouldn't know. Something must have happened back in Talbot. Something they were all connected with. Like the murder of Sam Buck, maybe? I lead a very sheltered life, Mr. Favor. I rarely go to town. I'm afraid I can't help you. Think nobody can. Or will. Mr. Favor. Why do you care? It's no concern of yours. Isn't it? Two of my drovers are dead so far. Well, if you don't think Andy Nye is the killer, whom do you suspect? Nobody. Everybody. Even a woman. There's something I'd like to know, Mrs. Cutter. You're not a woman to be frightened by much of anything, especially a ghost story. Now, why did you bring your husband all the way out here? To keep him safe. You're right, I'm not afraid, Mr. Favor. I'm not afraid to die when my time comes. But Abner, he is. You seem to be pretty sure it isn't your time. What do you mean by that? The murder steer doesn't strike down women, looks like. You think you have this all figured out, don't you, Mr. Favor? Well, I think you're wrong. I think the murder steer can strike at anyone, even a woman. Even you, Mr. Favor. I shouldn't have said that. We're your guests. Oh, I know, Mrs. Carter. Not at all. Thank you for the warning. Could you see who it was? Uh, but then I saw it in the moonlight. A steer. And I knew. And, and I reached. And I touched. Dead. Uh, Somebody knifed. Anybody seen Andy Nye? You know I didn't do this one. Yeah, but they'll never believe it. I gotta get out of here. You with me? Look, you think you're safe here. Maybe we can run away from the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, let's try anyway. We'll grab a couple of those night horses. Come on. Yeah. You ever seen it before, Pete? No, oh, I never did. Horses! Who's that? 
be nigh on price. They're taking off. Now you see how wrong you were. I'll go after him. No, Ronnie, you take charge of the herd. I'll get him. Oh. What, Andy? We better look for some place to hold up. Why? You think they aren't going to follow us and find us? Only chance is to find some hideout for a couple of days and let them pass on. You check those rocks over there. I'll look over here. Oh. Gus? Gus? Gus! Yeah. Look. Look down there. Somebody's gonna die. What do you mean? What are you talking about? No. No, Andy. No. Gus, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. no. Gus, wait a minute. Gus, are you crazy? No, Andy. No! Mr. Favor, I... Don't bother to say it. Give me your gun. Now look, I don't want to fight you, but nobody's going to hang me for killings I didn't do, especially when the proof's running away down that draw. What proof? The murder steer, and we can catch it if you help me get my horse. Here's one of the cartridges from the shots that got Gus. Feel it, still warm. It couldn't have gotten far. Come on. Finished it right there. He must be in those rocks up above that thicket. Look out! I think I got him spotted. Stay here and keep him busy while I circle around.
Know him? Sure. That's Hanson Buck, Sam's kid brother. I thought he was in California. Seems he came back. Hans? Anyway, I got all the rest of them but you, Andy. Hans. <laughs> Now maybe you'd better tell me the whole story. Starting with Sam Buck's murder, for instance. Well, it was... It was Jake Davis who had the argument with Sam over a steer. That steer. It was Jake's all right. And we were friends of his, so he... He came over and asked us if we'd go over to Sam's and help him get it back. I didn't much want to go, but... Go on. Well, we, we weren't expecting any trouble, but Sam came out and he caught us. And he had a gun. So Jake had to shoot him in self-defense. But I, I didn't have any part of that, Mr. Favor. I swear, I, I wasn't even wearing a gun. What counts is you were there. Now, who would have known that? I don't know. Somebody must have been in the house. Hanson Buck? No, he was in California. Who? Why wouldn't they report it to the sheriff? I don't know. Unless they couldn't. Unless... Unless it was a woman. Yeah. A married woman. He could have told us, but now... What'll they do to me? If they believe you, maybe six months in territorial prison as accessory. They don't. Don't try to make a run for it, Andy. No. No, I don't guess I could ever outrun that anyway. Like the looks of them bogs up ahead. I wish we had an eye to help us get through there. Yeah, well, maybe we ought to wait for Mr. Favor. I think we can make it. We can try anyhow. All right. Hey, look. Come on. Take care of him. Me, senor. No phantom. Don't worry. Just solid beef. Caught him red-handed, then. You could say that. All right, let's get to it. Somebody get a rope. Now, wait a minute. We can't do that. And why not? Hadn't we got to take him back to Talbot, boss? And hold up the herd for maybe two, three days? We'd be doing him a good turn, Rowdy. Mr. Favor. It's up to you, man. Now, look, wait a minute, Mr. Favor. You know the truth. Do I? I told you out there, don't you believe me? Betty, shake out your rope. Let them hang him? No. Oh, afraid I couldn't stop him now. But then maybe you might. I might. They might listen to a woman. Of course, then he'd have to tell his story. 
What story? About the murder steer. About how someone's using that legend to cover up the revenge killing of seven men. That's no concern of mine. His idea is it's a woman, a pretty young woman married to a rich old man. A woman who couldn't speak up, but who loved Sam Buck enough to avenge his death seven times over. That's crazy. That's what I told her, especially since one of the men she was supposed to have killed was her own husband. Nobody believed that. I know. You could get him to believe that she didn't really love him. You'd have a hard time convincing them that she did it just to avert suspicion from herself. You can't believe such things about me. Now, you can't. Well, my idea is, if it was you behind the killings, you'd have had to have an accomplice, someone to manage the steer, do the actual killing. Except, of course, your husband. That's the only one you would have done by your own hand. Now, if we could find an accomplice, they'd leave Andy. Without one, everything does point to him. We're ready, Mr. Favor. Why don't you stop this? Miss Cutter, got anything you want to say? No. How about you, Andy? Got anything to say? No. No, not anymore. Well, then, it only leaves one more. What was the name of that fellow we talked to out in the drawer? Well, that was... that was Hanson Buck. Yeah, Hanson Buck. I guess he's the only one left to testify. You're still sure you've got nothing to say? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I guess he'll tell us. Where is he? We left him tied up out there. When he tried to kill Andy, he said something about him being the last one. Nobody believe him. What's his word against mine? You can't prove a thing, not a thing. Well, I guess it does prove one thing, though. It wasn't Andy Knight. Don't try to stop me. I'm no lawman. And I ever love. Oh. I'm gonna die. Tell me. Could be. I'm scared. Just like I have nerve. Just as well, maybe. If she'd called your bluff, you wouldn't have been able to prove a thing. What, with that fellow already dead? I'm sure glad you stopped us. A oh, nine? You better get something to eat. No, no thanks. I'm not hungry. Keep up your strength. You've got to get us through the bogs. Well, wait a minute. What about going back to Talbot? Going back to Talbot? The way I see it, the case is finished. You were wrong not speaking up, but... Guess there isn't anybody else left to care, except you. Besides, we're clean out of Talbot County by now. Sure, ain't no law out here. Sure, no use dragging the whole thing up again. And dragging a dead woman's reputation in the dirt. Yeah, might as well let the people remember the way she was. Pretty and sweet. Well, thanks, Mr. Fink. Save your breath and get us through the bogs. Thanks. Have some bread. Yes, 
What a way to die, huh? Another victim of the murder steer. Yep, the last. You cannot be sure of that, senor. It has disappeared again, see? But it may return at any time. Nope. How can you be so sure? You're eating it. A trail herd's got to have a couple of experienced bog riders to get mired cattle out of mud holes and buffalo wallows. But when it comes to fishing the bog riders themselves out of trouble, not to mention the point and flank riders, the Wranglers and the Nighthawkers. It takes more than a rope and a short-handled shovel. I know, I'm Gil Faber, trail boss. in a stagecoach. My first and my last. The first rule is always sit on the outside. Then you'd only have one head on your shoulder. Uh, do you know when we get there? Oh, not long. Bertram. Bertram, wake up. Oh, what's the matter? I want to change places with you. I'll be in a draft. Well, anything's better than this. Now he can lean on you for a while. You should, should have told me sooner. I thought you might have noticed. How could I? I was asleep. Yes, so I noticed. How can you play cards in the dark? That's good practice. Are you a professional gambler? It's the only kind there are. The amateurs are really contributors to our support. Uh, I don't see why they play with you, then. Yeah, I wonder myself. Do you cheat? Sometimes. Do you? Well, now, just a moment. Can a man get any sleep around here? One hour for supper. Seems like I just closed my eyes. I'm glad we're leaving them. I couldn't stand to ride another mile in that coach. Don't worry, sweetheart. The worst is over now. My name's Bert Eaton. There was supposed to be a man to meet us here from my uncle's ranch. Yeah, he got here last night. So you're Charlie Eaton's nephew, huh? Sam Davis. Well, this is my wife. Glad to meet you, man. Don't often get newlyweds here. I told you so. You said the man was here to meet us? Yeah, Dan Simmons. He's there in bed. Oh, well, would you tell him we're here, please? Well, the last time I looked in, he was asleep. He's not feeling very good. He, I think he's got a fever. Well, do you think he'll be well enough to take us to the ranch tomorrow? Gosh, I can't tell. I'm not a doctor. Got your room all ready for you, though. And from now on, we'll call it the bridal suite. Oh, well, that's uh, very nice, but uh, we're really not newlyweds. 
No? No, oh, we've been married for three months. Oh, real old married folks. <clears throat> Would you show us to our room, please? Why, certainly, ma'am. I'd rather this way. This is the best we got. Hope you like it. Hmm. Over three months. Can you remember back that far? Yes. You didn't snow where they Oh, honestly. Now, honey, he means well. Don't now, honey, me. If anyone had told me what it was going to be like before we started, that horrible stagecoach, and, and now this place. Oh, everything will be all right as soon as we get to the ranch. Besides, we talked it all over. Now, Uncle Charlie's rich. He's going to make me his heir if I learn the business. Would you rather be the wife of a clerk from Boston? Well, at least in Boston, they're civilized. Oh, you're just tired. It'll be fine when we get there. Mm. And they'll be crazy about you. It'll be the prettiest thing they've ever seen. Shopper! If he isn't well in the morning, we'll go on alone. Well, you know the way? No, but I expect he can tell us. I understand it's quite a large ranch. Well, that it is, but I just didn't know if you could handle a team. Oh, I'll manage. Well, all right, I'll have the supplies ready. Supplies? What for? Well, take three days. You gotta eat. Oh. You, uh, you thought it was closer? Well, you can keep the room if you think you'd better wait. Well, maybe it would be better. Oh, no, indeed. We'll leave in the morning. Mm, nothing to worry about. Ain't been no Indians on the warpath around here for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't pay no attention to him. He's just trying to be funny. After being cooped up in a stagecoach with four strangers, I think you'll enjoy three days alone with your husband. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, there's not a doctor within 200 miles. He'll be feeling fine before I want to get here. I'm sorry you don't want to wait, son. But I'm so weak, I'd fall right out of the wagon if I started now. Well, is there anything I can do for you? No, I reckon not. When these spells come on me, all I can do is just lie in bed till they go away. You just keep heading straight north. You can't miss it. Well, I'll see you at the ranch, then. Yeah, good luck. Well, we're all set. Well, much obliged. Say hello to your uncle for me. Well, we have a nice trip now. Be careful. That's a girl. I don't see what's so difficult about this that you wanted to wait. He may be sick for a week. I didn't want to wait. I just wanted to be sure it was safe for you. I hope the others didn't think you were afraid. Well, you didn't, did you? Oh, of course not. But I don't want anyone else to. I want to be proud of you. You know something? Mm -hmm. I don't care what anyone in the whole world thinks of me except you. Coming up range. You could use some. You know what I'm going to do when it comes? 
take off my clothes and lie down on the ground and just soak it up. Better do it on high ground. Don't take much to make a flash flood when it's this dry. You ever been caught in one? Nope. I've had to do some mighty fast and fancy scrambling. Better pass the word to tighten up the herd. Smell that rain in the air. Is that what I smell? Sure is. About time, too. I've been saving my own. Yeah, I know. you're doing? I was just chasing these cattle out of our way. Get your wagon out of here. What's the trouble? This dumb donkey's trying to start a stampede. My husband was only trying to get these animals away from our wagon. Well, these animals are part of the herd. You'd do a lot better if you took your wagon around. Oh, uh, Scarlet, to tighten up the herd. Uh, we got a rainstorm coming in. Right. That's a sample of manners around here. They were just doing their job. Come on, get up. The boss. Looks like we're gonna get west pretty soon. Yeah, we might as well get something to eat before we do. That's what I was hoping you'd say. Stoke us up. I'll pass the word. Time to eat? You got in that stomach of yours, a clock? Hey, who's that? Oh, some dude couple. Oh, the gal really is something to her. Huh? You met him? Well, Joe caught the fellow who was trying to drive through some strays. Said he was just pushing him out of the way. Why didn't he go around him? I suggested that. What are they doing out here? I didn't ask. Come on, Wishbone, what are we gonna eat? You'll get yours. Here comes another one. I hope you talk up to him. Howdy! Oh. Oh. My name's Favor. That was uh, part of my herd you ran into a ways back. My husband's already explained. Oh, I didn't come to talk about that. I just thought I'd see if there's anything I could do for you. Oh. I'm Bert Eaton. This is my wife. Eaton? You any relation to Charlie Eaton? He's my uncle. Do you know him? We're going by his ranch to pick up some beef. Say, we're going to be having uh, some chow in a little bit. Care to join us? Oh, no, thank you. The man at the station fixed a lunch for us. Well, um, I'll see you then. A nice fella. Why didn't you want to eat with them? First they ball you out. Then you want to accept an invitation. Oh, they just talk differently out here. Besides, I had a coming to them. Well, I'm not used to being spoken to that way. I've never seen you so touchy. Cheer up. It won't be long now. How'd you make out? You and Joe must have given them a rough time. She liked to bit my head off. What's a dude like that doing out here anyway? His uncle's Charlie Eaton. They're heading for his ranch. Is that so? And the girl, she's his sister. The girl, she's his wife. Oh. Well, that's the way it goes sometimes. And you'd do well to remember that when we run into him at Eaton's Ranch. Oh, you don't have to worry about me, boss. I always steer clear of married women. My old man gave me that advice along with my first razor. She sure is pretty, though. I feel as 
though I've been roasting my face over a fire. Well, there's a nice sheltered place to make camp. We'll be out of the wind. Oh. You sit in the shade and rest. I'll have a fire going as soon as I unhitch the team. As soon as I get there, I'm going to soak in a tub for hours. <laughs> Feel better now? Mm-hmm. I told you things would get better. Now, where could you find something like this in Boston? Wide open spaces, nice warm fire, beautiful night. It's not so beautiful over there. Summer shower, it'll be over in a minute. Come on, we better get in the wagon. Cloudburst to make you feel great. Yeah, all night with those cows will still feel good. Ah, uh, the boys of you, huh? Me, I'm tired. I'm clean, but I'm tired. You're hey, lucky. Scared that lightning is going to send them clear back to San Antonio. Hey, look out there. What's that? I can't go another step. Well, here comes somebody. Oh, my hair, I must look like a witch. What happened? My husband took me camping. Our wagon was struck by lightning. The horses ran off. All our luggage burned. All my beautiful dresses. I wonder if I could impose on you to look for the horses. They belong to my uncle. We can round up the horses later. We better get you two back to the chuck wagon. Climb aboard. I can do it. Come on, mister. You can ride with me. You know, uh, lightning can strike anywhere. Not if you don't camp under a tree. Yeah. Rustle up some clothes from the supply wagon for Mr. and Mrs. Eaton. We don't stock women's clothes. That's right. Do the best you can. You can't stop now and fix you anything hot to eat, but uh, give you some jerky if you're hungry. Oh, I'm starved. Well, coming right up. Well, I'll get moving. Your wife better trail in the rest of the way with us. Well, I'm much obliged to her. 
Here you are, ma'am. What is it? Jerky. Dried beef. Tastes kind of good if you get used to it. Here's one for you, too. Thanks. Mm. How long does it take to get used to it? Oh, about two years. Kind of chewy, ain't it? Oh, Ruddy, you better pick up a couple of horses from the Remuda. Or would you rather ride in the wagon? Oh, oh no, I have had enough wagons to last me a lifetime. Oh, oh here you are. Hope they fit. These might do it. You can change them in the back of the supply wagon there. Well, here's hoping. I'll see that my uncle pays you for all this. Your horses will be here in a minute. I seem to be getting off on the wrong foot all around. What I meant was that we appreciate your help. See you later. Joe, I want you to help me saddle up a couple of horses. Who for? Well, that couple you met, they're going to join us. You mean that dude's going to trail with us? Yeah, he and his wife. Well, that thing sure has changed on the trail. Now they're using the wagons for ladies' dressing rooms. I call that progress. Get up. <laughs> all those beautiful dresses? Send for them by mail. You can have the store send duplicates of the ones you bought. Oh, fine. That won't take a bit more than six months. And look at the size of these. What happened to them? Ah, uh, lightning hit their wagon. Lost everything they own, closing off. Off? She sure leads him around by the nose. Yeah. Hey, it looked good on you. Here, you now you better take this one over here. He's a little more gentle. Oh, well, just a minute, ma'am. I'm quite capable, thank you. <laughs> like that. You never acted that way before. I'll take you back and get another one. Now, wait a minute. I'll go with you. Sorry about this. Oh, I enjoyed it. If they did that on purpose. If they did, it was you they were after. But you could have been killed. Oh, nonsense. I've ridden wilder horses than that before. I'll try the other one. These horses are darling compared with the ones at Miss Alice's Riding Academy in Boston. Wait a minute, I'll do it.
I was just going to have some fun with him. How'd I know she was going to take his horse? That's so I don't have to tell the boss. Now saddle up another one. He did that on purpose, didn't he? Oh, well, no. No, the horse just spooked a little, that's all. Well, then why did you knock him down? Oh, oh I was watching. Should I mention it to your Mr. Favor? Suit yourself. Fixed up, huh? All fixed up. Where's was your husband? Oh, he uh, didn't like the horse they got for him. Not enough spirit. Any chance of finding the horses? Well, I doubt it. If they're well broke horses, they'll just try and find the way back to the ranch. I think I ought to try anyway. Coming, Marcia? Well, you heard what Mr. Favor said. Well, they weren't your horses. Well, I I better go along for protection. Your protection. Got a mind of her own. Yeah, well, somebody has to. My hat! Oh. 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 My best hat! I'll buy you the prettiest one in the catalog. What catalog? It burned to ashes with everything else. Come on. Come on. Come on, what? The horses, remember? They're not my horses, remember? Indians, ride for your life! Come on! Indians, back there. Yeah? What about them? What do you mean, what about them? I saw them. Hello, Scout. Glad to see you, little cloud. Trail boys. How's the leg? Much better. <laughs> Run for your life. Oh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Eaton. My friend Little Cloud and his sons. Sorry if I frightened you. Oh, uh, I, uh... uh... Look, we're gonna be making camp real soon. Have supper with us. I was wondering when you ask me. Let's go, pale face. <laughs> Get 
out there and check the strays. He's been snooping around. My father would have scalped you for that. I have an idea you swung a pretty mean tomahawk yourself before you got civilized. I must show you a scalp collection sometime. Are there any savage Indians left? There are a couple around here when they get liquored up. They look savage, even to me. I like food. If you live long enough, you will be good cook. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even know good cooking if you tasted. How's the lake? Good as it ever will be at my age. What happened to it? I broke leg. Horse stepped in chuck hole. Horse fell on leg. Feet fixed leg for me. He was crawling out across the desert on his two hands and one knee when I found him. He'd already come a couple of miles. Where were you heading for? I was trying to get to town. He only had another 20 miles to go. Tough old buzzard probably would have made it, too. Oh, well, how do you like your new duds? Very fashionable. Hey, I heard you run into a war party today. Your jokes are almost as bad as your cooking. Being scared, David. I'm going lay off with you. Well, all I said. Lay off. <laughs> Bert? What is it? Did somebody think of another joke? You've got to stop getting up and walking away every time they do. Well, you're a fine one to talk. You've complained about everything that's happened since we left Boston. You didn't exactly cover yourself with glory. Camping in that gully, making a spectacle of yourself when you saw Little Cloud. All right, all right. It's not all right. That's the trouble. Maybe you just married the wrong man. Maybe I didn't marry a man at all. Must be on way. See you next year. You take good care of yourself now, little cloud. Sorry we made trouble with your friends. No, that's all right. He'll get over it. He and his wife have been fighting ever since they joined up with us in here. Well, why he let her do that? He can't help it. She's his wife. Uh, you white men have a strange custom. You suppose he really took some scalps? Sure he did. You notice the way he was eyeing that bushy lion head of yours? It reminded him of the old days. I must apologize for my husband's behavior. That's all right. I can't say I blame him. Let's get to work, Pete. Yep. You, Mr. Favor doesn't like me very much, does he? Why do you say that? Doesn't even take woman's intuition to know that. Well, I think he just feels a little sorry for your husband, that's all. Why? Because he's married to such a shrew? Well, I didn't mean that. What I meant is that, you know, everything seems to be going wrong for him. You men certainly stick together, don't you? Yeah, well, I mean, I'll see you a little later. Is there anything wrong? Everything's wrong. Well, look, you shouldn't take it so hard, ma'am. Oh, stop calling me ma'am. You made me sound like an old mean school teacher. Oh, yes, ma'am. I mean, uh... My name's Marcia. Oh, well, Marcia, is there anything I can do to help you? Or... Yes. You can take me back to Boston. <laughs> well, that, that's kind of impossible. Your husband wouldn't like anything like that. Oh, I don't care if I never see him again. Is that any way to talk? No, 
Why do you know about it? Do you know how a woman feels when she finds out her husband's a coward and a fool? Well, that's laying it all kind of strong, eh? I mean, everybody's scared now and then, and, and everybody does foolish things. Go ahead. Stick up for him. Uh, Nobody cares how I feel. I'm not sticking up for him. That's just the way things are. Would you do something for me? Sure, if I can. Would you help me saddle up my horse? No. I want to go riding in the moonlight. <laughs> no, the boss would never stand for that. All right. I'll do it myself. Now, wait a minute. I can't let you do that. Oh, let me go. Look, not until you get this notion out of your head. You can't ride in the moonlight. You can't stop me. Oh, uh, Mr. Eaton. Well, uh... <laughs> well, don't let me interrupt you. Well, I was... Well, no, she... Well, we were kind of... Uh, well, go right ahead with whatever you or she was or were doing. What does that mean? That means, look, you keep on the way you're headed and you're going to end up with trouble. Are you jealous? I'm going to tell you something that's going to surprise you. I'm not jealous. I'm just getting a little tired. I better go explain. There's nothing to explain. I don't want him having the wrong idea. Let him think what he wants. He won't do anything about it. Marcy, what are you trying to prove, anyway? It's already been proven. My husband thought you were making love to me, and he just walked away. That's for being so nice. <laughs> You ain't forgot that good advice your old man gave you. Trying to stop a girl from crying, that's all. Mm-hmm. Pleasant dreams. I had a good sleep last night. The whole herd over me, I wouldn't have known it. How about you? Oh, I woke up once or twice. I wonder where those lovebirds are this morning. I haven't seen them around. Is everything all right between them, right? What should I know? No, well, boss, I don't consider myself no expert when it comes to women. I don't know what she needs. Huh? Good stiff kicking the pants. If I was her husband, that's... You the... ain't, so why don't you shut up, Pete? What's wrong with him? I don't know, but I better find out. Maybe we'd better have a little talk. What about? You know about what? About that uh, first razor your daddy gave you? Look, that ain't got nothing to do with this. And the advice that went along with it. Something about staying clear of married women? Pete, Pete had no right to talk about Marcia that way. Marcia? Well, well, she told me to call her by her first name. What's wrong with that? Look, you got caught in the middle of a family fight. Don't think it's anything more than that, and don't let it be. I don't want you preaching at me. I'm not preaching at you, boy. I'm just giving you a little friendly, fatherly advice. And besides, it's an order, so stay out of it. You find out what's wrong with it? Growing pains. You mean Mrs. Eaton? That's why I bit my head off. Mine, too. If you straighten him out, huh? I gave him some fatherly advice. Good morning, Mr. Favor. Good morning. I was wondering if there was anything I could do to help out until we get to the ranch. You can always use an extra hand. Roddy! Take Mr. Eaton down and check him in with Scarlett. He's gonna work. You think you'll both get there? I think they better. Uh, I'd like to explain about last night. 
Let's just stick to business. Boss says to put Eaton here to work. He's the boss. I don't guess you ever worked a herd. Well, they don't have many in Boston. Well, you ride flank here. Keep them tightened up, but don't scare them. You see any Indians on the warpath, let me know. Flash of light. Hey, there it is. Somebody's working themselves up a good headache. Some Indian pony's been stomping around here. Let's hope a headache's all they're working up. Better pass the word. you ride by with my husband. Yeah, well, he said he wanted to work for his keep, didn't he, Delia? We haven't spoken to each other since last night. Well, I tried to explain to him, but he wouldn't listen. Don't have it on your conscience. It was over before then. You sure this just isn't a family argument? For your information, I'll be going back to Boston just as soon as possible. Alone. Do you think you'll ever be visiting Boston? Well, yeah, I might. That would be nice. Excuse me. Scarlet put him where he can't do any harm. Tell the boys to keep their eyes peeled for a couple of drunken Indians. They may take a shine to our beat. Did you see him? No, oh, we saw a bottle in their tracks. Right. Stick close to the herd. A couple of liquored up Indians around here. Now well, we've picked up everything else. Might as well pick up a couple of drunks. Let me know if you do. I've never seen a drunken Indian before. You're lucky. Well, what's the difference between drunken Indians and anybody else? You never know how it'll hit them. All you know is if they so much as smell a cork, it's gonna hit them. <laughs> Watch you wandering off by yourself. Afraid I'll run into some Indians?
boss says to watch out for a couple of drunken Indians. Don't you think you carry that joke about far enough? I didn't ride all this way to make jokes. You mean it's on the level? You'll find out if you run into it. chip on my shoulder picking fights and every now and then I do something that makes me look a little foolish. I was like that when you married me and I'm probably going to stay that way. Is that clear? Is it? Oh, yes, yes. Well? Darling. Darling, I love you. Like they say, two is company. 